Welcome to Adventures with a Very Small Lathe. This is a gear cutter arbor I made in the shop recently. Fundamentally, it's a very similar tool to the sitting saw arbor I made a couple of months back, but the design is actually kind of different. The cutter thickness and the cutter inner diameter are different, but aside from that, the design of the sitting saw arbor has the register for the inner diameter of the cutter on the end cap, which in turn registers against the inner bore of the main tool body. In order to make sure that this tool runs true, this inner bore here has to be very concentric with the spindle shaft diameter. Because these are on opposite ends of the tool, that means that we have to use this outer diameter here as a reference surface, so that when the part is re re reversed, it's only as true to machine each part as it's possible to indicate this reference diameter on the uh, forge or chuck. To get around that limitation, this design works the other way around. The nut is on the machine side rather than the end side and the end cap actually forms part of the main body. The register is here, and because it's on the same side of the part as the spindle diameter, it's possible to machine both surfaces in the same setup. The overall machining of this part is slightly more complex and that requires the thread to be built into it, but the other design would probably have been better if it had a thread built into it anyway, rather than requiring a separate nut. I thought much more carefully about the uh, run out on this tool because sitting saws tend to be not very good for run out anyway, so it wasn't as critical as it might have been, whereas gear cutting tools need to have much better run out. Let's take a look at some video of how the machining went. I used hot rolled engineering steel for this project, so the first step was to clean up one end, remove the mill scale and define a good surface to hold the part firmly in the chuck. I used very light cuts to get through the mill scale as the surface was rough and the end a long way from the chuck. The clean end can now be mounted in the chuck jaws with a solid grip on the smooth surface. As the part is fairly long, I centre drill the end to use in the tailstock to provide a bit of extra rigidity. Once the mill scale was removed, I did a quick check of the recommended cutting speed for this diameter with this coated carbide insert. 4700 RPM is way faster than this lathe can do, so I ran it as fast as vibration would allow. For a part as simple and smooth as this, I could run the lathe flat out on the second belt pulley, 
With the belt on the highest pulley, there isn't enough torque for this kind of turning, so this is the fastest speed I can get. The first operation was to turn down to fit the inner diameter of the cutter, 22mm with clearance for a slip fit. Once this surface was to size, I checked the dimension at both ends and found a slight taper. Only the 5mm of the surface nearest the chuck was destined to be the register for the cutter, so there was no point in trying to get the rest of the length to a precise slip fit. Most of the rest of the length must be to turn down to 10mm to make the shank. I marked the point at the end of the thread and then took a couple of passes off the rest of the length to make it easier to check the fit of the cutter. With two to three hundredths of a millimetre clearance, it was still too tight to slip on, even if I polished the surface. I took a very light cut and increased the clearance to five hundredths, which seemed to give me the fit I wanted. I took a little more off the shank diameter to make sure there was enough clearance to cut the thread easily, but left most of the material there to keep the part rigid. I cut a groove with the parting tool at the far end of the thread and then chamfered both ends in preparation for cutting the thread with a single point tool. I recorded a lot of footage of machining this thread, but it's too long to fit into this video. I'm considering using the footage for a separate video on threading with this lathe. I touched off to find my zero point, reset the scale on the crossfeed and prepared to make the first cut. Always check the first pass with a thread gauge. Looks good. The first passes were very slow and started to show signs of chatter as they got deeper. I cleaned up the cuts by running the lathe faster, but this made stopping at the right point more difficult. Once the thread was deep enough, I made a final spring pass at the same depth. 
I then return the compound to its zero point at the original diameter, disengage the feed, and run the tool past the thread to clean up any protruding burr raised during the thread cutting. I turn most of the shank diameter down off camera, bringing it to the target 10mm for the milling machine spindle collet. Because this feature is to be held in a collet, it needs to have as little taper as possible. I usually find I can reduce the taper on a part by taking very light finishing passes with low tool pressure. A couple of thread cutting passes have caught the edge of the cutter register, so I cleaned it up with a chamfer tool. Cutting a relief into the inner part of the clamping face ensures the clamping force is distributed closer to the outer diameter and makes the cutter more stable. This tool was a very clumsy way to relieve it though. See the link at the top right for Stefan Gottesfinder's video where he made a custom tool to cut this type of relief. This next piece of stock will be the nut. Its short length makes it fairly difficult to repeatedly true up in the three-jaw chuck. Once I'd cleaned up a large enough area to grip firmly, I used a parallel against the back of the chuck to ensure the part was as true as possible. This isn't perfect, but good enough for this part. From this point on, all the critical surfaces are going to be machined without rechucking, so should be concentric with each other. was obviously going to leave a seam halfway along the outer face, but the outer face isn't critical, and I can clean up the surface once the tool is complete. There was a lot of material to hog out of the middle to form the nut, so I started with 6mm and 10mm twist drills to make a hole large enough for a boring bar. I was running the lathe too fast for this 10mm drill at first, which caused a lot of noise. Slowing down made the cut much cleaner. This boring bar fits into a 10mm hole, but is way too flexible to remove material accurately from a hole this deep. As soon as the hole is large enough, I replaced it with a larger, more rigid boring bar. <laughs> 
increase the boring bar size one more time for the last few passes. This is the largest the tool post can hold, but is required at this diameter to ensure the bore is parallel and has a good finish. Once most of the material was removed from the ID, I could quickly and easily rebring the length of the nut to final dimension. The first 5mm of the nut needed to be bored out to be a close fit over the cutter register, to ensure the tool could securely hold cutters of any thickness up to the maximum that would fit within the length of the register. To cut the thread I used a left handed tool and set the lathe up to run in reverse. This allows the threading tool to cut feeding away from the chuck, which makes it safer to run the lathe at high cutting speeds. Once again I touched off to find the zero point. To find the starting point for the cutter I looked down the back of the chuck. The first pass didn't quite make contact, so I set up a second pass slightly deeper to make the scratch marks. The chains gears hadn't been touched since cutting the thread in the first part, but I still always check the scratch pass with a thread gauge. It's fiddly to find the starting point every time, but it's more than worth it to avoid having to stop the lathe exactly at the end of the cut. Being able to make the cut with the RPM this high ensures the finish is way cleaner than in the external thread. I stopped when the fit was still pretty snug. Deburring would ease the fit a little and some of the friction came from the smooth bore having a close slip fit over the register outer diameter.
Moving the cutter back to its zero point and running it along the thread removed any protruding burr. Clean up the outside of the nut, remove the ugly seam and put a nice finish pass on the outer diameter of the complete tool. I tighten the nut firmly into place. In order to ensure the cutting forces weren't trying to loosen the nut, I run the lathe in reverse with the tool cutting from behind. The final step was to mill a hex on the outside of the nut to ensure I could tighten it well. This hex collet block allowed me to index the part. Once again I made sure the cutting forces were in the correct direction and wouldn't act to loosen the nut from the arbor. I used a pair of parallels held against the side and top of the vise to ensure the collet block was indexed consistently for each pass. This was really clumsy and I should find something more dependable if I do this kind of work again. being able to cut gears opens up a whole world of possibilities for future projects. I haven't settled on my first project using a shop made gear yet, so if you have any suggestions please leave a comment. Subscribe and check back soon to see what I end up making. <laughs>